If you love learning about Blender, then you will have probably seen tons of video tutorials on YouTube about how to create 3D models and realistic materials. But you will also know that there are many other things that Blender can do besides being able to create 3D models for scenes. Blender has its own sculpting package as well as being able to edit videos and animations. So while I could have done a multi-part series on how to create a scene in Blender or how to create some realistic looking materials, I thought instead that we would focus on a topic that doesn't get anywhere near as much attention on YouTube. And that is being able to use Blender's compositor to edit images and animations that have already been created. So welcome to this six part YouTube tutorial series on how to composite images and animations using Blender version 2.8. In this series, we're going to be focusing on the fundamentals of compositing. So how you can set up Blender to easily compare results between your original image and your composited image how to perform basic color correction on your image, how to use things like filter nodes to create cool effects such as glare, and also how to isolate parts of your image and how to use render passes in Blender. All that and more is coming up in this six part series on how to composite images and animations in Blender version 2.8. Now, if you want to follow along with this six part series using your own projects, you are more than welcome to do so. However, if you are looking to use the project that we are using for this series, then you can download it via the link in the video description. But not only will you be getting all of the assets related to our project, if you sign up, you will also get access to our free Blender 2.8 PDF cheat sheet full of keyboard shortcuts that are commonly used in Blender for things like navigating the 3D viewport, creating animations, manipulating nodes in the compositor, etc. As well as some of our top tips and tricks for making the most of your Blender experience and improving your workflow. On top of that, you will also have access to our bi-weekly newsletter for the latest information on all things related to Blender. Now, before we begin looking at all of the different things that we can do with compositing in Blender, just a quick note that this file is using Blender version 2.81. So if you are using your own project, just know that with this lecture in particular, there are going to be a couple of things that you won't be able to do if you are using Blender version 2.80. So the best thing is to make sure you are using Blender version 2.81 if you want to fully follow along with this tutorial. Now what we have here is a default scene. So I'm just going to view our scene in the rendered viewport shading method. And we already are looking through our camera here. So we've got our camera shot set up. This is the image that we are looking to render. And all we're going to do first of all is we're just going to render an image. So over here in the properties panel, you can see that we are using our GPU for the render. We're using the cycles render engine, which we will be doing throughout this tutorial series and we've set the number of samples for the first render to 128. So what we're going to do now is we're going to render and select render image, and then we'll come straight back once this render has been completed. 
So with the image now rendered, we can close this window. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the compositing workspace. So left click where it says compositing and you should see something like this. Now, if you're using your own project, you might not see anything at all here. If that's the case, it's probably because your use nodes option up here is not ticked. So just make sure that that is ticked and then these two nodes should appear. Now, normally you should be able to see an image here, but if you do not see that image, then simply left click and drag so that you detach the composite node from the render layers node and then reattach and release. Now we should be able to see our rendered image. So this render layers node represents the image that we have just rendered in Blender. The composite node is the output here. So we can put different nodes in between these two nodes to make changes to our rendered image and any changes that we make will be present in the composite node. Now down here we have a timeline but we don't need the timeline so we're actually going to be replacing this with two new panels. So I'm just going to increase the size of the timeline then I'm going to right click and select vertical split. Then left click about here so that we have two panels and we're going to change this one to the image editor and we're also going to change this one to the image editor as well. Now at the moment both of these are showing the exact same image. This is our render result and when we have our render result viewable in the Blender interface any changes that we make by adding nodes here will become visible down here. So for example, if we add a new node and I've just brought up that menu by holding down the shift button and pressing A on my keyboard, that brings up our add menu. And let's go color correction. And we bring in this color correction node and we're just going to drag it over this line. So left click, and it now attaches the color correction node to both the render layers node and the composite node. Now, if we start to manipulate these values, you can see that the changes being made here are visible in both of these panels. Now, this is not the exact layout that we want. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to delete the color correction node and you can delete a node by making sure it is selected. So left click to make sure the appropriate node is selected. Hit the X key to delete. Now when we do that, because these two are no longer attached, the image here becomes black because there's nothing to connect to the composite. So again, it's just a matter of taking the image output here and plugging it into the image input and then we get our image back. Now, rather than using the composite node to preview the final result, I prefer to use it to just preview the original image. So throughout this tutorial series, we're actually not going to be adding anything between our render layers node or our composite node. Instead, we're going to be adding a viewer node to this setup. So hit Shift A, go to output and select viewer. Now we're gonna pop the viewer about here. You'll notice that we have this box that's shown up and it's like that because we currently don't have anything attached to the viewer node. So let's take the image and plug it in here. And now you can see in the background that our rendered image has appeared. Now, if you don't see this, then you'll want to left click where it says backdrop. So if I left click there, you can see it disappears. If I left click again, we can once again see the image. Now, if I left click on the viewer node, we can then begin to manipulate this image. 
So we can manipulate its size by grabbing one of these handles and manipulating it from each of those respective handles. Or we could move this image entirely by holding down the Alt key, holding down at the middle mouse button on our mouse and then moving our mouse around and this allows us to move the image itself. Now if we were to not use the Alt key but still use the middle mouse button we'd be able to pan around our node setup instead. So the last thing I'm going to do here with regards to the setup is come down to this panel and we're going to change this from the render result to the viewer node. So what we now have on display is a large version acting as the backdrop for our viewer. So this is going to be the final result. We have the render result itself located here and we also have the viewer node located here. Now another way that we can view our result is by using a split viewer. So I'm just going to show you that very quickly. So we're going to hit Shift A, Output, and then go Split Viewer. Now I'm going to position it here and plug the output of the image into this top image node here. And at the moment we can't see anything, but that's because the Viewer node here is the current active view. So we need to left click on Split Viewer in order to see it and now you can see that we basically have one half of the image visible. To get the other half we would need to again take the output of the image here and plug it in to here and now we can see both sides. So this acts as another method of being able to preview the effect that specific nodes are going to have on your final result. So for example, let's add back in a color correction node and I'm just going to hover it over the bottom one. So you'll see as you hover over one of these lines, they become highlighted. So once it does that, left click and it should connect the node to the node tree. Now, if I manipulate these values again, you should be able to see that this time only one half of this image is being altered. You can change where this dividing line is located on the image by manipulating the value of this factor. So if we increase it, you can see the line moves across here and it will move in the opposite direction if we decrease the factor. You can also determine whether you want the split viewer to work in the X direction or the Y direction. Now for this tutorial series, I'm not going to be using the split viewer node. So we're just going to select the split viewer node, hold down the shift key to allow us to select other nodes. So we can select the color correction node along with the split viewer node and then hit the X key to delete both of those nodes. And now we're back to having our composite and viewer nodes. Next, we're going to demonstrate how we can save a new image that is separate from the original rendered image. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Shift A and this time we're going to add a blur node. So we're going to add some blur to this image. So left click to bring it into our editor, hover over this line and left click. Now at the moment, nothing has changed on our image and that's because we need to manipulate the X and Y values here. So I'm just going to set this to three and the Y to three. And then we should begin to see a very subtle change. Now, if we increase this, you can see that the blur gets much, much stronger. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a nice value for the blur. So we only want a little bit of blur, but we still want it to be noticeable. So let's use a value of eight on each axis. And there we go. So it's a subtle change from the original image, 
but it is a noticeable one so we have some blur in our image. Now if we want to save this there are a couple of places where we can save this result. We can either go to our viewer node here, go image and then select save as image to save as a new image or we can select the viewer node itself and in the side panel here we can click on save this image. Now if you don't see this side panel so it looks something like this you can press the N key to bring that side panel into view. So I'm going to click save this image and then I'm going to locate somewhere where I can save the image. So I have created a file where we're going to be saving our composited images. I'm just going to name this and we're going to just call it blur since that's the only change that has been made to this image. And you will notice that by default it should be a .png file. If it's something that you don't want to use you can come up to where it says format and then change the type of file here so you have things like jpegs pngs etc so once you're ready to save just click on save this image and now your composited image has been saved as a separate file you can very easily do this with the composite node itself so you actually don't need the viewer node here but I like to use it because I like to have that distinction between the original image which is viewable through the composite node and also the altered image which is used from the viewer node. You could even actually just reverse this entirely and then plug the blur into the composite and then save the composite node instead. So you can do that as well. But I like to use the viewer node for any alterations that I make to the image. So just plug that back in to the viewer node. Now, before we do anything else, I want to talk very quickly about render passes. So here in the render layers, node here we have three options image alpha and depth these are known as passes but you can also have many more of these so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can add these additional passes and we're going to use a few of them to reduce the amount of noise in this image now because we've used the blur node there's not a lot of noise that's visible but if we select a node and then hit the M key on our keyboard, we can mute the effect of that node. So here, if you have a look underneath the benches, you should be able to see that there's quite a bit of noise there. And there's also quite a bit of noise around the ball where it attaches to the cone. And actually, it's better if I use the viewer node here for this. So if we zoom in, you can see that there's a lot of noise if you zoom up close. It's not as bad if you scroll out, but if you enlarge this image, you can really start to see how much noise there is in certain places, especially where there are shadows. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the properties panel. And then if we go to our view layer properties, you will see that there is a subsection called passes. If it's closed, just open it up and you will see that we have a variety of options here. Now, I'm not going to turn on every single one, but we are going to turn on most of these so that we can manipulate them in a couple of future tutorials. So I'm just going to make sure each of these are active and you can see as I activate each of these in the properties panel they become visible in the render layers node. So we'll turn those on. We're going to turn on the denoising data which is going to be important for what we're about to do and we also have the light passes so what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the diffuse, the glossy and the transmission options. We're not going to be using subsurface or volume because neither of these are present in this scene. 
Now to select them quickly, I can left click, hold down the left mouse button and just hover my mouse across each of these options to turn them on automatically. We also have some options here. So I'm going to turn on emission, shadow and ambient occlusion. And that should be more than enough for this series. So you can see now that the render layers node is very, very big. However, any nodes that we have added, any outputs that we have added to this list, if we were to plug them directly into the viewer node, so for example, the ambient occlusion directly into the viewer node, we would see absolutely nothing. So what we have to do here is we have to re-render our image. So I'm just going to plug the blur back in here just for the moment. And now what we'll do is we will go to the layout workspace. Just give that a second to load up. And what I'm going to do actually is just change that to a different method of shading just so we can do things a little bit quicker. And I am actually going to decrease the number of samples, not increase, I'm going to decrease the number of samples from 128 down to 25. And you're going to see why I do this in a couple of moments. So let's now go to render and render the image. And this should be much quicker than the previous render that we did earlier because we have only one fifth the number of samples that we had before. So we're just going to wait a few seconds for this to complete. And you can already see that there's a lot more noise in this image, but we're going to solve that with the help of compositing. So we're going to hit the X button here just to close this and then go to the compositing workspace once again. And you can hopefully see that there is a lot more noise in our composite image. If we are to grab the ambient occlusion this time though, and connect it to the viewer node, we can now see our image, but only the ambient occlusion. So we can see any of the dark areas, that's where ambient occlusion is more present. And we can preview just about any of these nodes if we want. So for example, we could have a look at the normal values. We could have a look at the shadow values. Or we could have a look at the index values for the materials. What we are going to do right now, however, is we're going to be using some of these denoising outputs here. And along with that, we're going to be using the denoise node. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to keep our blur as it is at the moment. And we're going to add with Shift and A, filter, denoise. So I'm going to position it here. And let's take the blur out and let's use the denoise first. So let's take the image here and plug it into the image here. And actually, let's just preview this quickly. So I'm just going to position the output here to the input of the viewer node. And this is what we get at the moment. Now, you might already be able to see that there's a lot less noise. If I was to mute the denoise node with the M key, you should be able to instantly see the difference. So just by toggling the M key on and off, we can actually preview how this denoise node is affecting our image. But to get the best result, we also should be looking to use this denoising normal option here and plug it in to the normal input here and then take the denoising albedo into here. So now just by using a single node in the compositing workspace, we have been able to take a very grainy, very noisy render and really been able to clean it up and get rid of most of that noise that was present before. So now let's add the blur back in. So we're going to plug 
the image input into the image output and then the same from the blur to the viewer making sure that we hover our mouse over the correct nodes you can see the line reappears because it's now a part of this sequence so make sure that the blur node is selected and press the M key on your keyboard to unmute give it a couple of seconds to composite and there we go so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this result save this image and I'm just going to overwrite the blur.png and now my new rendered image has been saved to my computer now there is one issue with this setup if you were to save your file close your file and then reopen the file in order to get this working again you would need to re-render the image now with the help of the denoise node image renders can get a lot lot shorter however it's still a bit of a pain that you would have to actually render an image again every single time that you open up blender so the best workaround here is to just save this as a special type of image and then replace this render layers node with that image so the way we do that is we're going to come over to the output properties in the properties panel and where it says output we're going to define the output location but before we do that we're going to change the file format the format that we're going to change this to is known as open exr multi-layer now make sure you select the multi-layer one and not the standard exr so select open exr multi-layer and then we're going to define an output so left click on this icon here and then find somewhere to save your file so i've got an exr folder here and I'm actually going to take this one that was originally created and just delete it. And then we're going to click on accept. And I've got to make sure that this part is empty just to make things a little bit easier. So accept there. So we can see that we have the output file here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to render the image again but this time it's going to be rendered as an EXR so go render render image and then just give it a few seconds to complete the render so with that done I'm just going to go image save as image and then we're just going to go to our EXR file and we're just going to save this so let's save it as dodgeball.exr and then press enter oh I've got to make sure that I type it correctly and then just select save as image now I'm going to close this I'm going to just move the render layers to the side and we're going to hit shift A add an input and then select image so left click on image and I'm just going to bring the image here now at the moment it only has two outputs image and alpha but that's because there's no image assigned to this node so let's go open we're going to find our EXR image and then just open it up in that node now you can see that it's shown up but we still only have two nodes and so now we have this combined option and this alpha option but what we can do is we can come down to where it says layer composite and we're going to just zoom in so you can see a little bit better we're going to left click and then we're going to select view layer as soon as we do that all of our render passes become visible now this is only possible 
if you render and save an image as a .exr file, making sure that the file format is set to open EXR multi-layer. What this allows to do, and I know that took a while to get there, but what this allows us to do is it allows us to plug these same values in and effectively replace the render layers node entirely, allowing us to basically do everything that we could before, but now we won't have to render every time we reopen Blender. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to finish off by plugging each of these where each of these were before. Okay, and once you've done that, if we just zoom out a little bit, you no longer need the render layers node here. So just left click and hit X to delete. And now we have a setup here that in the following tutorials, we'll be able to add a lot more to and really be able to take a deep dive into how we can composite images and animations in Blender. Thanks guys and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys. If you are interested in learning more about Blender then feel free to subscribe to our bi-weekly newsletter which gives you updates on all things Blender, including future releases of Blender, tips and tricks on how to use some of your favorite tools, recommendations for things like tutorials, courses, as well as things like add-ons or websites that can improve your Blender experience. So thanks guys, and I hope to see you in the next video.